Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video, we're going to be painting a picture of Wind Mountain, which is a famous landmark on the border between Texas and New Mexico State. And what I want to do is talk about the different layers that you would have in a picture. And by what I mean by layers is the background and the uh, middle ground and the foreground. So here's a picture that I've taken of uh, Wind Mountain and the background would be considered the mountains and the sky and the clouds. And the middle ground is going to be con the uh, corrals and the bushes and the things that are sort of in the middle. And then the foreground will be everything that's in the front there. And that's all the bushes that are there and, and all the things that you put in the corners of your paintings. So we want to go ahead and start with the background in a painting. And we want to <clears throat> start with the sky because the sky is considered part of the background. So we want to go ahead and add a blue sky to this painting. And if you're following along with traditional uh, materials, you can use acrylics or oils for this, just something that will dry so that you can add layers and here I'm using uh, ultramarine blue with white acrylic gesso and some purple <clears throat> and I'm using an x-shaped stroke to uh, make it have a really smooth background and then I'm using some flat oils in an infinite painter and that's the program that we're using is infinite painter for Android and I want to go ahead and put some clouds in now this is all still part of the background and it's going to be much lighter than even the middle ground and the foreground and this is what you call aerial perspective when you make things in the background look lighter than they are in the foreground and so we want to go ahead and just kind of smudge those clouds out and make them real soft and smooth because we're not interested in real big details for this painting. We just want to show the, the soft clouds that are in the sky. Then we also want to paint the distant mountains. And so this is also in the background layers. And typically a painting may have seven or eight layers in it. And when I say layers, I mean uh, different um, different elements that get increasingly darker as they come forward into the foreground. But as I said before, most elements in your picture can be split into three categories, the background, the middle ground, and the foreground. And so here I'm adding some purplish looking hills in the background. And these are famous hills that are on the border between uh, the states of New Mexico and Texas in the United States here. And so we just got, want kind of a light purple color and you can use dioxazine purple and uh, ultramarine blue and a touch of burnt sienna with uh, white acrylic gesso to give this mixture. But you don't want them real dark. You want them still sort of a light purplish color. And then here we are working still a little bit more on the background and we want a light sandy color because that's the color of the land that is next to the mountains. Now we're starting to get into sort of the middle ground and things are going to get a little bit darker and this is where the creosote bushes or greasewood as we call them here are and they're going to be a sort of a sage green or a olive green color and you can get that using um, hooker's green with some yellow ochre 
and throw in some white acrylic gesso because we're still the middle ground is still not going to be as intense in color as the foreground so you have to use a little bit of white in this also and keep it still keep it in the lighter shades of color and i'm just kind of i'm using the uh, pollock brush and infinite painter to get that rough look for the um, greasewood bushes and you also want to um, add a little bit of the sandy um, <clears throat> color of the ground in the background but keep it light and probably just get some burnt umber and put a lot of white acrylic gesso in it if you're following along with acrylics or oils or even pastels you want something a medium that will take layering well and so the next step is we're starting on the middle ground and we already kind of started on it with the with the bushes but we're going to start on the fence and also um, the things that are in the corrals there and the ground and so this is going to be as i said middle ground is going to be a little bit more intense in color and by that i mean there's not as much white uh, added into your um, paint mixture there's going to be more more of the original color in it and so i'm doing the ground right here and <clears throat> it's going to be a mixture of burnt sienna and some white and possibly you can add some orange in there if you're following along with acrylics or oils or um, gouache some traditional type of layering medium and then we're going to go ahead and add some darker bushes to set it back from the ones that are next to the mountains because we want to bring this forward and get it a little bit darker and so i'm just working on trying to get a little bit of a more detailed look but we're still not doing real big details that's another thing with your background and your foreground you're not going to have extreme details they're going to be kind of um, fuzzy looking or but they won't be um, in extreme detail because that's what it looks like to the human eye. Um, most things in the background and the middle ground are going to be uh, less clear, less sharp. And so I'm adding a little bit of some trees there, some creek willows. And I'm going to start on the old corral as well. And this is an old corral and it's sort of falling down and it needs to be fixed and everything. And so it's got all kinds of boards that lean and, and nothing looks real straight and everything. It's just kind of um, with old weathered wood, made with old weathered wood. And so here I'm just um, adding a little bit of detail to those background trees, but not a whole lot. And then I want to go ahead and just add a little bit of some highlights to the uh, <clears throat> the old weathered boards that are in the corral and add some bushes around them. And this is the middle ground and things are going to start getting larger as they come forward. So this is also part of your perspective is that things will become larger as they come become as they come forward to the edge of your painting and so this is the end of part one of our wind mountain series and in part two i'll go ahead and talk about the things that are in the foreground and all the details that you need to add um, when you get to the foreground and the front of your painting so thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you want to see part two, then hit the subscribe button and I will catch you later.